wonderful this morning to know that you are here. I want to pray this morning, Lord, that you will bless your word. That we know this morning that your word is a blessing. I thank you that we will not leave this place like we came in Jesus' name. And we give you all the honor, the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated. What a wonderful privilege to have you here. You are so welcome. All our viewers online, you are welcome this morning. And I know that God has got something special for you in store. Turn to your neighbor and say, change your words. Change your destiny. Do you know this morning that your destiny is be being determined by the words that you speak? The Bible says in Proverbs 10 verse 11, The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. Look closely to that verse. It says the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. So what does it say? It says this morning that whatever we speak will determine our outcome. The Bible continues and say by saying in Isaiah 57 Verse 19, I create the fruits of your lips. What does it mean? It means whatever I speak, whatever I say, whatever I proclaim or declare, God will create. So if I say this morning, I believe that we are going to enter into a season of revival, it means that God will create that. If you say this morning, I am more than a conqueror, that's what God will create. If you say this morning, I am not going to make it, it means this morning you are a creator of your own words. So that's what the Bible declares, that death and life is in our words. That word create means to form, to fashion, to mold like a potter the fruits of your lips. So whatever you're going to enter, whatever you're going to say, God says, I will create the words of your lips. If you say this morning, I'm not going to make it, or you are saying this morning, I am going to make it, God will create whatever I speak. The Bible continues by saying, the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. So you have the power this morning to speak life or you can speak death this morning. You can speak victory this morning. You can speak this morning progression. You can speak this morning much, much more. You can speak this morning whatever you want the outcome to be. It's in the power of your mouth this morning. Proverbs 12 verse 17 verse 19 declares, Good, speak, good people speak truth and can be trusted in court. But liars make a bad witness. Speak without thinking. Don't your neighbors say, do you speak without thinking? Do you say words without thinking? Sometimes somebody just turns in front of you. What are you saying? What are you speaking? I remember when the children was young, we all say, count to ten before you speak. The Bible says that it's foolish people that speak without thinking. So you need to pause, you need to reflect, and you need to ask yourself, what is going to enter out of my mouth now? Because the Bible declares whatever you speak, God will create. What are you speaking in your life? What are you speaking in your working environment? What are you speaking over this country? What are you speaking over your town? What are you speaking this morning? Are you speaking life or are you speaking death? I don't know about you, 
I know our government is not the best and I know they're not doing what they should be doing. But I want to declare it this morning. I'm speaking a life over South Africa. I'm speaking healing over South Africa. I'm speaking revival over South Africa this morning. Because my Bible declares whatever I speak, God will create. Let's start speaking life over our country. Let's start speaking life over our government. Let's start speaking life. Turn to your neighbor and say, speak life. Speak without thinking your words can cut like a knife. Be wise. Your words can heal. Lies can only, lies only last for a minute or a moment. But the truth lasts forever. Proverbs 12 verse 14. From the fruit of his mouth a man is satisfied with good. Matthew 15 verse 18 declares, But the things that came out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile him. It's quite easy to understand what is in somebody's heart. Just listen to what they're speaking. Are they speaking life, or are they speaking death? What are they speaking? The Bible says what, is, what your heart is full of, you will speak. Are you speaking victory? Are you proclaiming breakthrough? Are you proclaiming healing? Or are you proclaiming defeat? Are you proclaiming, I'm not going to make it? Are you proclaiming, we're not in a good country? Are you proclaiming that we haven't got a good government? Maybe that's true. But the point this morning, let's speak life over that. Let's change our atmosphere. Let's change our circumstances. Let's change it. How do we change it? We change it through speaking life. The Bible says in Proverbs 16 verse 24, Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the body. If you say, I am not going to make it, you're telling your body to become sick. You're telling your body to become depressed. You are telling your body you're not in a good space. You are telling your body, listen here, you're not going to make it. How stupid. Tell your body you are going to make it. Tell your spirit you are going to make it. Tell your soul you are going to make it. And if you feel there's no hope, and you feel you don't know how you're going to make it, and you are in a circumstance or in a situation or in a problem that you don't know how you're going to get out of this. Maybe you are in a lion's den. Maybe you are in a burning fire. Start praising God, lifting up your God. We serve a great God. Tell Him how good He is. Bring honor to Him. Hallelujah. I serve a great, big, wonderful God. God, you are so good. God, you are a God of mercy. Mercy. God, thank you that you hear my prayer. And when you start praising God, you will suddenly realize that your God is greater than your problem. Words can have the power to inspire, to motivate, to comfort and heal. But they can also curse. They can harm. They can bring pain. They can damage other our others. How do you treat your wife? How do you, what, how do you treat your children? What are you saying, you slechte ding? Yes, yes, you ma. Yes, yes, your pa. Yes, yes, your opa groeikie. Why don't you tell your child he's like God? Why don't you tell, tell your wife she's an image of God? Because the Bible declares when I'm born again, I'm a masterpiece created by God. Turn to your neighbor and say, speak life. Speak life. Speak life, speak life, speak life. I speak life over South Africa. I speak life over the West Rand. I speak life over this church. I remember when they called me in to say, listen, we want to close this assembly. We can't make it anymore. 
And I, when I looked at this whole situation, I said, I'm speaking life. I said, I speak revival. I speak. And then we started with a little. And we fought the first service and the second service. And we started to think about third, a third service. Speak life. Where there's death, there's speak life. When you get at a situation where there's dry bones, start prophesying over those bones and speak life. You are a life carrier. Positive words can help us to connect with others, strengthen our relationship, promote empathy and understanding. Negative words, on the other hand, can have a destructive impact on people, on our own lives. A lot of, spe lot of people speak negative words towards themselves because of what somebody has said. You will never make it. Do you know that 95% of people that are in prison today is because somewhere somebody told them you will end up in prison? If that's the power of words, let's speak life. Speak life over your children. Speak life over your circumstances. We can use negative words. We can damage people's self-esteem. We can create feelings of worthly, worthlessness and shame and discourage people from pursuing their goals. Amazing. In Greek, word means logos, which means both word and container. Words contain our state of being both positive and negative. Your words matter more than what you think. Each and every word that you utter has got power, negative or positive. What are you speaking? Hebrews 11 verse 3. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the Word of God. God spoke a word and He created. The Bible says the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the grave is the same Spirit that dwells within me and you. My Bible declares further, each and every word that I speak, God will create. So you are speaking in the same authority, under the same power, the same anointing. Let's speak words of life. Mark 11 verse 23, I assure you, and most solemnly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and be thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his mind in God's unlimited ability. Sure. Remember, when the Bible speaks about mountains, he speaks about problems. He speaks about situations. He speaks about circumstances. I don't know what, the mount, what your mountain's name might be this morning. It may be a mountain of financial difficulty. It may be a mountain of sickness this morning. It may be a mountain of looking for work. I don't know what your mountain might be, but this is what I, what I know. The Bible says, whoever says to this mountain, whoever says to this mountain, whoever speak to your mountain, speak to your mountain this morning. Ek sê altyd praat met jou berg tot dat hy oorkry. Keep on speaking until your mountain moves. So my question this morning, what are you saying about your mountain? Are you praising your mountain? How do I praise my mountain? You make your mountain bigger than God. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. This is the boom and the bus. This is the bottle and the label. It comes in threes. No, mine doesn't come in threes. Mine comes in six. It's the wa my wash machine. It's the motorbike. It's the gate, the motor gate. It's the swimming pool pump. It's my wife. It's my children. It's my wallet. It's my work. Mm. Feed your mountain. Feed your mountain. Feed your mountain. My Bible says I do not need to feed my mountain. I need to speak to my mountain. I need to speak to my gate that's not working. I need to speak to my wife that doesn't want to listen. I need to speak to my cold children that is disobedient. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak life. Speak life. Thank you, Lord. I know that you are going to provide. Thank you, Lord. I know you're going to give me a new washing machine. Thank you, Lord. I know that you're going to give me a new gate. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. What are you saying about your finances, about your relationship, about your situation? What are you saying to your mountains? Are you speaking the word of God to them? Believing in your heart that God can move your mountain. I want to declare it this morning. I said it this morning. I used the example of Hector. He's sitting here in front. Hector, mark it so that all you can see. He doesn't want to. <laughs> he will always tell me the story of his dad sitting there at the back. That his dad is better and bigger and greater and cleverer than what I am. My dad can carry 11 bricks. My dad has got a bigger car than you. My dad has got a bigger house than you. Then I say, Hector, I get a greater swim bath as you love. Somewhere I must win. But I want to declare it. I've got a big father. I serve a mountain moving father. I serve a mountain moving father. My dad is bigger than your dad. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How? He can move mountains of sickness. He can move mountains of financial disasters. He can move mountains of addiction. He can move mountains. I've got a mountain moving father. Hector, my papa, can escape. Hallelujah! Joel 3 verse 10. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. My finances are strong. My marriage is strong. My children are strong. Hallelujah. My God is strong. I serve a mountain moving God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Get a little bit excited. It's because of my father. Hallelujah. Isaiah 14 verse 2. Take words with you and return to the Lord. The Bible says when you go to the Lord, take your words with you. Isn't that amazing? Take your words. What words are you taking to God? Words of defeat or words of victory? Remember we said earlier on, words could mean also container. So what you are doing, you've got a container of words. And you are gathering all these words in the container. And the Bible says, take your words to God. And I wonder if I, he opens this container and he sees what you are saying. Hallelujah. And he looks at it and he says, hallelujah. Much, much more. Hallelujah. Much, much more. And he takes out the next one. And he says, oh, much, much more. And he takes out the next one. And he says, much, much more for my child. Much, much more. Much, much more. Much, much more. Much, much more. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I feel good this morning. I feel good this morning. What happened here? Let me get me back. I'm so excited. I even lost my place here, but I'm going to get it back now. Give me one second. You want cut the after. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I can just feel that God is busy doing something in this place this morning. I can just feel that the Spirit of God is moving in this place. I can feel in my spirit this morning that God is changing our language. Hallelujah. I can just feel this morning that we are not going to be the same again. Our speech will never be the same again. We will talk differently. We will speak differently. And stuff and our, our environment will change. Amen. I'm back. It's amazing how Satan wants to steal the word. Huh? But I give glory to God. I've got it back. Psalm 119 verse 49 says, Remember, remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. Your word has given me a new life. This is my comfort in suffering. What an amazing word. Look at that. Remember your word to your servant. Remember your word. Where do I find the word of God? In the Bible. Remember your word. The Bible says you must remind God of his promises. Now the Bible says remember your word to your servant. For you have given me hope. Who gives you hope this morning? It's God. It's the word of God. You speak life this morning. If you don't know what to do, go to the word of God. The word of God will encourage you. The word of God will lift you up. The word of God will take you to a next level. Now it says when you're down and out, when you are suffering, go to God. Look at His Word. You will find hope there. So what do I need to do when I'm in suffering? I do proclaim positive words over my situation. I proclaim hope. I proclaim victory. I proclaim progression. I proclaim healing. I proclaim revival. I proclaim breakthrough. Hallelujah! The Bible says in Joshua 21 verse 48, 45, not one. Say not one. Word of all the good promises that the Lord had made to the house of Israel had failed. All came to pass. The Bible says not one promise made to Israel failed. The problem wasn't with the word. The word was you will enter into the promised land. Many did not enter the promised land. Why? They did not believe the word. We want to go back to Egypt. We want to go back where we came from. But I want to declare this morning, the Bible says there was a different spirit in Caleb and, and um, Joshua. Why? Because they believed the word of God. You will always go through a wilderness. You will always go through a difficult time. You will always go through a time where there's shortage. But remember, God is still in control. Speak life in your wilderness. Speak life. Mark 5 verse 28. For she said, oh I love this. For she said. Don't you labor and say, for she said. For she said, if I may touch, but his clothes I shall be whole. Let me explain to you what well, explain to you what happened here. Here's a woman, twelve years, sick. A blood disease that niemand, that nobody can heal. Niemand. That no one could heal. The Bible said for twelve years, she went from one doctor to another doctor to another doctor, finding someone to heal her. Now the Bible says, and I, I just want you to think for a moment, you this lady, after 12 years, you've spent everything that you have. You've got nothing left. You haven't got a penny left. There's no, you haven't got a cent left. You sold everything. You sold your house. You sold your car. You, everything you gave just to be healed. Every time to hear, you, we cannot heal you. We haven't got a cure. There's nothing. We cannot treat you. There's nothing that we can do. But the Bible said that she heard about a mountain mover. She heard about a, a healer. His name was Jesus. She heard that it's not about works. She heard that it was not about performance. She heard it was not what you pay. It's what you believe. 
And she heard that if you believe in the name of Jesus, mountains will move. She heard if you believe in the name of Jesus and you call upon that name, you will be healed. She heard that if you believe in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and you are struggling and nobody can help, she, that person, Jesus, can help. But this lady did not qualify to get near to Jesus because she was not part of Israel. She was not a Jew. She had, to, she had to stand from a distance. She had to view from a distance. It was not allowed for her to move closer to a master or to a rabbi or to a Jesus. But she said to herself, she said, if I can only touch his garment. And she kept on saying, Every time somebody passes in and says, Jesus healed another one. Jesus healed another one. Jesus healed another one. You know what the devil says? Another one bites the dust. No, 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 no. And every time that she went to a doctor, she came out there and felt again. I beat her. Another one has bite the dust, but she decided, I'm going to push through. I'm going to push through. I'm going to push through. And I see this lady decided, I'm going to push through this crowd. And every time she pushes against somebody, she said to herself, if I can only touch her garment. And people was pushing her around. They were pushing her out. Lady, what are you seeking? I'm seeking the garment of Jesus. And they pushed her and she fell. And she said, if I can just get to Jesus, if I can just push his garment... Oh, getting closer and closer. And somebody picks her up and throw her back. And she said, if I can just touch his garment. And she gets down and she starts crawl, crawling. If I can just touch his garment. She said to herself, and she's close. And she wants to touch. But when she touches, somebody pushes her back. And she reaches have you, seen, have you seen that feeling? Sometimes you reach, you just there, you can't get there. You can't get there. I got a Christmas feeling yesterday and I bought some Christmas presents for the little ones. And I would have put it right there on top of the cupboard that they can't see. I couldn't reach. I nearly broke all my bones because in that reach, I fell. This lady said, I'm reaching. And she reaches. And she grabs and she misses. And she grabs and she misses. And she grabs. And she touches. And the Bible says, at that moment she was healed. Oh, hallelujah. If only, if only, if only I can touch his garment. Another example I'm going to conclude now. I think my time is, I've got a minute and 45 minutes, seconds. Another example, David, the young boy, not a lot of experience. But the Bible said, he account, encountered a giant. And this giant said, I, there's no other God. I am the God. There's nobody that can come against me. He was swearing. He was belittling the children of God. And there was not one person that had the guts to say. But David, a young boy, stood up and he said this. You came at me with a sword and a spear and a battle axe. I come to you in the name of the Lord of the angel armies. The Lord of Israel, troops whom you curse and mock. He says, this very day God heard and served up your body. Remember, nothing has happened yet. He's speaking. He's speaking. While he's speaking, God is creating. Yo, David, you're moving a little bit fast. Today, you are. You are today, today, today. And he's creating. And God needs to move you in the background. He says, today, this very day, God's handing you over to me. I'm about to kill you. 
cut off your head and serve up your body and the bodies of your... No, now, he, now he's speaking. Now he's getting brave. Not only are we going to kill you, we're going to kill each and every Philistine here. Keep quiet. Keep quiet, David. Keep quiet. Ah, David is shouting. He's saying the whole earth, the whole earth will know that there is an extraordinary God in Israel. Whoa, is everybody will know that there is an extraordinary God in Israel. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord, the Bible says you have made the Lord tired with your words. With your complaining. With the government. With South Africa. With the potholes. You have made God tired. Get on Muhammad. The Greek for tired is mugmak. Jy die Heere mugmak. Met al jou klagtes, met al jou memoreeringe, you made God tired. I'm going to conclude 2 Kings 4 verse 26. A lady, Elijah, went there every week and he slept over. The Bible said in the upper room. And while he was sleeping, he said, what can we do for this lady? How can we reward her? How can we reward this lady? And then the servant came and said, she hasn't got a child. He says, well, that's not too difficult. He actually went to the lady and said, I understand you don't have a child. She makes an excuse. I don't want the child. It's not she doesn't want the child. She's afraid that if they pray, she's not going to get a child. So I said, no, a year from now on, whether you want it or you don't want it, you will have a child. Because she knew what was going on in her heart. The Bible says a year after that, the child was born. And then as the years passed on, this child passed away, died because of the sun and the heat working outside. She took this child to the upper room. If you're in a, pro, if you're in a situation, always go to the upper room. She took the child, she laid the child on the bed of the prophet. If you're in a problem, in a situation, you don't know what to do, take your promise and go and lie it on the bed of the promise giver. She took the child, she put it on the, on the bed of the promise giver. And she said to her servant, get the donkey ready. We're going to the prophet, we're going to the man of God. And they got the donkey ready. And her husband stopped and said, where are you going? She says, I'm going to the prophet of God. He says, what are you going to do there? I'm going to worship. It's not a Sunday. It's not a Sabbath. She says, I just feel like worshiping. I just feel like praising God. You must remember, the promise is dead. I think the child's name was promised. The promise was dead. Promise was lying on the bed. And there she gets on a donkey. And I'll handle her. And she moves with that donkey. And she says to her servant, another three. Give him another three at the back. Let that donkey move. I need to get to the, prof the prophet of God. She got the prophet of God, saw her came. And when he saw her came, he said this. He said, go and ask her, how is she doing? How is her husband doing? And how is her son doing? You know, the Bible says before you ask, God already knows. He knew where it's her husband. He knew how she is. He knew that the son was dead. And then the Bible says, when she came closer, this was her answer. How are you doing? So let's read. Run to meet her and say, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? She answered, it is 
well, there's something wrong with this lady. The promise is dead. Uh -uh. You don't understand. The promise is on the bed of the promise giver. You, you don't understand. The other translation says everything is all right. You see, where's your focus? Is your focus in death or is your focus in life? Her focus was in the promise giver. In the promise giver. And then the last translation says, everything is fine. She answered. The Bible said, they went back and got on that bed. And when the promise giver got back on that bed, that child became alive again. I don't care what your promise looks like today. Maybe your promise is dead this morning. What you need to do this morning, you need to speak well. It is well. It is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Isaiah 57 verse 19, I create the fruit of your lips. God creates the fruit of your lips. Proverbs 26 verse 18, anyone who would trick someone and then say I was only joking is a fool who shoots flaming arrows into the air and accident, accidentally kills someone. That's how serious God is about words. The darkness still is so. Luke 6 verse 37. Don't pick on people. Jump on their, their failures. Criticize their faults. Unless, of course, you want the same treatment. Pastor, niemand het my gegroet by die kerk nie. Ek kan verstaan, hoekom het jy niemand gegroet nie. Don't condemn those who are down. The hardness can boomerang. Be easy on people. You'll find life is a lot easier. Proverbs 13 verse 3. Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens it wide, his lips comes to ruin. Let no one corrupt, corrupting talk come. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. But only such as good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Colossians 4 verse 6, Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Psalm 141 verse 3, and I conclude with this, Set the guard, O Lord, over my mouth, keep, keep watch over the door, of my lips. Jacob, help me. It is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. We are on a 21 day fast. 21 days of not speaking negative words. We are speaking life. We are speaking victory. We are speaking healing. We are speaking breakthrough. We are speaking progression. And I want to invite you to join us in this journey of 21 days. We've already done seven days, 14 left. We're concluding on the 28th of March. And join us. Join us. May God bless you, Mari.